Hello, Graph Fanatics. Have you ever worked with data which doesn't fit any pretty graph, circle image, or any other flashy visualization? You may be longing for a traditional spreadsheet to just to be able to look at all those data fields, numbers, or statuses. If that is the case, table panel visualizations come to the rescue. And today, we will deep dive into them. What are them? how to create them and work with them, the main settings and configurations that you can define on them. Now, a table panel visualization in Grafana is a powerful tool for representing tabular data in a structured and uh, a customizable format, which in other words means that this panel displays data in columns and rows. Again, very similar to a spreadsheet as it comes as well with functionalities such as sorting, paginating, grouping, and uh, filtering. So many features! And the cherry on top is that the table panel is incredibly powerful in its customizations. You can do powerful formatting, conditional styling, and much, much more! I would dare to say, with table panels, imagination is the limit of what you can do with this powerful visualization type. And with this awesome description, I am sure that you may be looking forward to finding out more about them. So let's get ahead and start working with table panels. First, we will add the table panel. To do so, we need to access or create the dashboard where we will create the panel. Inside the dashboard, you can always add a new panel with the upper add button and by selecting visualization. If you have a new or clean dashboard, you will have a huge middle button for that. Once you click it, if this is your first panel in the dashboard, you will be asked to select a data source to pull the data into the table panel. Here, like most panel visualizations, you can select one or multiple options. But for this example, we will use a data source everyone has in their Grafana instance, the Test Data Data Source. For more information about it, check the link in the corner. Now click on the Test Data Data Source to select it. You will now see a screen with lots of options and a no data message. This is the panel editor screen, but hey, this is not the graph that we are looking for, right? By default, Grafana shows you a time series panel. To change it into the table panel, go to the panel display options of the panel editor, click on the upper right dropdown and search or type for the table option and click on it. There we go. But um, still no data. Well, we haven't selected any. Let's select below something apt for a multi-column table let's say an exponential heat map source type, or maybe a flame graph, or logs, or even a CSV data source. <laughs> we can play around with the scenarios available in the test data data source and uh, see how each information bit is displayed. The visualization preview section will update dynamically with the changes. But uh, just a note, as you will find out, annotations, alerts, and a few others are not supported by the table panels. But do not worry, the vast majority of data is supported by it. You can also use multiple data sources such as Loki, Prometheus, InfluxDB, Microsoft SQL Server, Graphite, and many, many, many more. But for simplicity, we will use the CSV scenario loading the AutoMobiles file from the test data source. Now, let's click on Apply to get back to the main dashboard. And there you have it, a table panel. Well, a not so pretty table panel, I would say, but we can change that. Before we go on customizing it, we can play with it already by clicking on the column title to easily sort the data. Right away it is sortable, ain't that cool? We can also scroll vertically and horizontally to see the card data we have, as yeah, we have a lot, <laughs> lots of data. <laughs> All right, uh, this is too much data and it doesn't look so pretty, so let's dive into what we can customize. Let's click on the three dots of the panel and select Edit to access the panel editor. Here, we will be able to customize several things in our table panel. First, below the image, if the information that is displayed is too much or not exactly what we wanted in our panel, we can play with the query or queries of the panel. For now, we won't delve too much on this as querying is a 
deep topic. But in this area, you can change queries to bring only the columns that we want. And we can also transform the data. In the end, make sure that you get rows and columns that you need for your data. In the right section of the panel editor, the panel display options have several things that appeared when we selected the table panel. The first thing, as with almost all panels, is the panel title description, links and repeat options. These are the general panel settings. And for more information about them, check the link in the corner. For now, we will just modify the title. Let's put on it the table panel video. Nice. Now, getting inside of the table options, the first element is the show header switcher. This will pull the column or field name from your query and display it on top of each one of the columns. And as I like those indications, I want to keep it turned on. The next element is the cell height. To change how tall, you can switch uh, between small, medium, and large. I want to keep things in medium. How about that? Now, the next element is the Enable Pagination option. This means that if you have many rows of data, you won't be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And since it seems like we have lots of cars here, I want it active. Well, <laughs> actually, we had a lot. All right, next, we have a minimum and normal column width. By default, the values are 150 and auto. The auto value means that Grafana assigns the size we see based on the table size and the minimum width. But mm, I want it smaller. The minimum is useful when you open Grafana on small screens or you have too many columns. We don't want those columns to be ridiculously thin in our mobile devices, right? By rule, Grafana lets you go for 50 as the smallest. So I will set them to 50 and 100 as I want to see more columns. Next is the column alignment, which in itself it's very explanatory, right? And I want everything centered. Following up, we have the column filter option. This will let your users do all sorts of filtering very much in a spreadsheet style. I like to give power to the user, so let's keep it. Now, in the table footer section, we have the option to display well, a footer. Once activated, it will add a row at the bottom with all sorts of calculations and fund information to, regarding the data in our table. Grafana will display it on all the numeric columns, but below you can select if you want to have it only on one or two or more. I don't think we need this for now, but now you know how to use it. Let's turn it off. Now, moving on to the font section, here in the cell options is where you can change the cell type, which by default is in auto mode, which means plain text. But in this auto mode, you can activate a cell value inspect, which will add a tiny eye at the corner on each one of those super long values that you cannot see in a single column. Hover over it and you will be able to see it. And that's it for auto. Let's keep moving. Click on the cell type to find all the available views. The first one is a sparkling which renders a value series and gives you all the series options, but we need specific data types and the time series to table data transformation for it. That is a deep topic, so if you want more information, link in the corner. Let's move on to the next one. Now, the color text. Once selected, you will see the value inspect options as well. The data will be colorful now. The colors defined use the thresholds that are defined at the bottom. As you can see, the panel came with some defaults. Anything over 80 will be red, and otherwise the base will be green. Thresholds are also a topic on themselves, and for more information on them, link on the corner as usual. Moving on, we have the colored background. Pretty much the same as the previous, only that the background is what is colored uh, instead of the text. The only extra here is that you have the option of adding some gradient to this color. Check. Plain, shiny, plain, shiny. <laughs> okay, let's keep it that. All right, moving on, we have the gouge option. After we select it, you will see some colorful bars next to our data. These bars or gouges can be set to different types, basic bars with lines, gradients, or LCD. You can also modify the value or text is displayed. You can completely remove it and leave just the gouge, or you can also set it to the default text color of the table, or also you can set it to the value gouge color. Again, all these colors are defined by the thresholds, but a note, the gouge sizes will be set as the maximum number that appears on the whole table. Next, we have the JSON view, which shows values formatted as code. 
for that, we need to quickly change our cars into some JSON. If a value is an object, the JSON view allows browsing the JSON object, which will appear once you hover over it. Nice, right? Okay, let's go back to the original data. Moving on, we have the image view. If you have field values that are an image URL or a base64 encoded image, you can configure the table to display them as an image. Let's change uh, this to a clean CSV so that we can add something that I want. Let's grab some images URL and paste it there. Yay, we have an image inside of our table. And there you have it. The rest of the options below are standard panel options. For more information on them, please check the link in the corner. And you may be wondering, that is great and all, but uh, the whole table changed while I was moving the settings. I want each column to be different and unique. Well, worry no more. Let's find out how we can make each column look the best according to its needs. The secret is at the bottom of the All section of the Panel Display Options. There, we have the Add Field Override button. There lies the secret. Also, you can select the tab for the overrides where you can also add them and where they will be exclusively displayed. They will be on both sides. So, first, we will click on the Add Field Override button. There, we can pick the way in which we want to select the column or field that we want to customize. Personally, I like to pick them by name, but if you want to explore all the ways that you can do this, check the link in the corner. Now, selecting it by name, let's select the miles per gallon. The first thing that we could do is uh, just hide the column. If this is too much and we don't want to know the miles, we can hide it. But no, miles are important. I want to keep it. But keep it in mind. If you want to hide a column, you can use overrides to do so. Or, as well, you can filter them from your query or even hide them with a data transformation. But moving on, uh, we must click on the Add Override Property button and from there select whatever we would like to modify on what we configured earlier. Let's make it more visible then and change the cell options and cell type to gouge. You will see all the gouge options that we described earlier once selected. So I will just pick an LCD because I like LCDs a lot. <laughs> now, I think it is uh, not wide enough as the mileage is very important to me. So let's add one more and now select the column width and set it to, let's say 300. Nice, very visible now. We can even add thresholds just for that column. In the same way, now I want to modify the column for the country as it seems too wide to me. Let's create a new override, same, selecting it by name, selecting the country. Now we add a property and the column width. Let's do 50. <laughs> now it's not so overwhelming, right? Nice. When we create overrides, the main fields will indicate to you which ones are affected by a blue dot. The blue dot will appear next to the main fields that had an override on them so that you are not crazy looking for like, oh, wait, this is not changing. <laughs> and there you have it, a table panel visualization that is very colorful and pretty. Now, go ahead and create table visualization panels in your own dashboards. If you have any questions or suggestions about table panels, other visualizations, or requests for future content, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more Grafana goodness, and stay tuned for the next Grafana video. Happy dashboarding and have a good one!